Summer has broken its chokehold. Sometimes highs are in the 70s. It's back to school season. It's a lovely day to be in New York City. Welcome to Miracles in Manhattan. My thoughts do not mean anything. It's going to be a lot easier to podcast on the astral plane, is all I have to say when we get there. (laughs) Yeah, because all we have to do is think stuff. Yes. And then everyone knows it. (laughs) Hi, and welcome back to Miracles in Manhattan, the show where two spiritual delinquents lead you through a course in miracles, trying to wake up in the city that never sleeps. I'm Marco here with my good friend and co-host. Stephanie Wild. Reverend Stephanie Wilde. <laughs> How are you? Me, I'm great. I am absolutely great today. Thank you. Cool. Beautiful weather. I walk, I did a lot of walking through the city. It's just been so it's, nice. Yeah. The leaves are changing. Gorgeous. Got to watch me plug in plugs for two hours. Four hours. <laughs> four? <laughs> four? <laughs> I don't, it might, like have four. It might have been. Three. Let's let's split the difference at three. Sure. Cool. But you know what? What? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because all is good. I just looked around the room and realized that, that there's a car my thoughts alarm. don't mean anything. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. That's part of the gig. People know what they're in for. It's so funny you notice those things. I just don't ever notice them. I notice, I notice them on behalf of the listener. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's part of your job, I guess. And yeah, part of my job is not to notice I them. I guess so. <laughs> yes. I I have a trick, uh, like when I'm meditating Uh uh, and something like that happens, I've trained my subconscious mind to use that as a signal to go deeper into meditation. That's interesting. Mm. When I, in a meditative state, that sort of thing doesn't bother me the way it does now either, but I, but I haven't done what you just said. That's interesting. Mm. Um, yeah, it's going to be a lot easier to podcast on the astral plane is all I have to say (laughs) when we get there. Yeah, because all we have to do is think stuff. Yes. And then in, in everyone the, knows it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Throw away your iPhone. Cool. All right. Uh, so we're going to want to take a shot, I, I believe, lesson 10. Yeah, let's try lesson 10. So, so lesson 10 is my thoughts do not mean anything. So. If you, th- if you remember a little while ago, we did lesson four. And lesson four was these thoughts do not mean anything. So now we're taking it a little further and linking the idea to ourselves, our own thoughts. Uh, and if you remember also lesson eight, because we're slowly building, right, step by step. So if you remember lesson eight, it says, my mind is preoccupied with past thoughts. Mm -hmm. And we've learned that our thoughts are all about the past. So if our thoughts are all about the past, then they can't be true because right now we're in this present moment. Uh, And... We're just reinforcing that. We're just reinforcing that, except we're applying it to our own thoughts. Um, Lesson 10, again, my thoughts do not mean anything. Let me ask you a clarifying question. Mm. Um, What you just said, is that to say that that a preoccupation with with thoughts rooted in the past is in itself meaningless or counterproductive? Um, preoccupation, yes. Right. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. So it says here in lesson 10 that, um, we are emphasizing that the presence of thoughts means that we are not in fact thinking. This is merely another way of repeating our earlier statement that 
our mind is really a blank. So that's true mind. It's a blank. Right. Which means we, if it's a blank, when it's a blank, we are experiencing the present moment and that is reality. But when we're thinking, we're living in the past and that is not reality. That's all it is. Okay. That's all it is. That seems to put a lot, um, a heavy burden on perception then, doesn't it? If uh, Yeah. That's right. Right. We're dismantling mm-hmm. perceptions. Perception is not reality. Right. Mm. True perception, I mean. Yeah. Is, is but, you know, yeah. thoughts are not the true perception, right? Yeah. Somebody... Um, um, who was a uh, in the art world kind of told me something maybe relative uh, relevant to that. Um, if you look at kind of mid to later Picasso portraits, oh. you'll notice that um, as soon as he gets away from kind of a realistic style, mm-hmm. um, the first thing that happens is that the eyes go sideways. Not so, no, they're on the same plane. Like okay, well, to of, me, the right. philistine. <laughs> Yeah, the eyes go sideways, dude. Yeah, they look weird, right? <laughs> yeah, and I guess uh, according to this person, that was sort of his engagement with 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 truly perceiving without thinking about the subject. Ooh, mm-hmm. okay, yeah. Later yeah, to be yeah, taken yeah. up by Kand- Kandinsky and Point and Line. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I just said so many things that we don't at me, please. <laughs> just don't at me for any of that. No, we're just couple of spiritual delinquents which is a couple of normal people just sort of bumbling around and and that that helps me actually yeah Yeah. no wonder I like Picasso so much though that era Mm -hmm. or whatever period isn't that the proper word um yeah yeah Mm -hmm. cool all right well let me let me describe the exercise Mm -hmm. and then we can talk some more Mm. so this is the way we do this exercise we close our eyes and we repeat the lesson, my thoughts do not mean anything, and then we add, this idea will help to release me from all that I now believe. We search our mind for all the thoughts that are available to us without selecting any specific ones or judging them or classifying them. It says here, and I think this is a useful tip, we can imagine that we're watching an oddly assorted procession going by which has little, if any, personal meaning to you. So as each thought crosses our mind, we say, my thought about this doesn't mean anything, my thought about that doesn't mean anything, and repeat, this idea will help to release me from all that I now believe. So there's a few things. It's sort of almost like a little set of mantras or something. Mm. Um, And it says here that we're to do this five times a day for no more than a minute each. And we can do it for less time if we experience discomfort. (laughs) Right. Would you recommend somebody do that exercise indoors versus outdoors versus in what kind of setting? Oh, it doesn't matter because it's only about our thoughts. We're not actually looking around ourselves this time. We're, We're applying this to our thoughts. So you could be anywhere. Just you could close your eyes or open them or be anywhere. Mm. Why, why do you ask that? I think it's well because again, uh, because I think there is a perceptual component ultimately to this. Uh huh. It is an interesting exercise to do both in a room where nothing's happening, and also on a street where a procession of meaningless objects is. Passing mm, okay, except that it says close your eyes for these exercises. I didn't listen to that. <laughs> <laughs> close your eyes and then repeat, my thoughts do not mean anything. Mm. This idea will help to release me from all that I now believe. My thought about this doesn't mean anything. My thought about that doesn't mean anything. This idea will help to release me from all that I now believe. The other the other ones, though, that was a good suggestion yeah. <laughs> for the earlier exercises. <laughs> my suggestions can be applied But you have to figure out which (laughs) podcast to apply them to. Uh, Um, That that, that whole thing couldn't sound more um, zen. um, Oh, yeah? Closer to the kind of zen that I practice. uh, It couldn't be closer, pretty much. Um, Yeah. I mean, the idea is, in a lot of ways, it's about 
again, separating things from the associations we have with them. Right. right? Be they personal or, mm-hmm. you know, that being a bottle of cologne you know, and a coffee cup and what I feel about those things. Right. My thought about this cologne doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Yeah. My thought about that coffee doesn't mean anything. And um, again, in one of my like Facebook dating groups, someone popped up. Maybe you should clarify that because I've had to ask you what that means. A Facebook dating group is a group is not a group of people on Facebook trying to date each other. Oh no, no, no. What is it? Uh, it's a, it's a group where people talk about dating people outside the group <laughs> nice. online. Usually, you know, it's it's a lot of women kvetching about online like, dating. Sure, sure. Um, there's one of them I'm in which has men in it too, which is, I think, a bit more useful. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's it called? Do you know? Um, Boy, that couldn't be less relevant. I'll look it up later. Yeah. There's, I'm in three or four of them, like, you yeah. know. Um, but anyway, so this 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 popped up. A uh, woman's dating a guy. I forget how long. Not terribly long. Not months. Um, um, but not, but more than weeks. And she met him for lunch or something and he was dropping her off at her office or something. Anyway, and she goes to take a selfie with him together. Oh, her selfie. He goes. On her first date? No, 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 no. This is after more, more than weeks, but less than months. Like it's within the first 90 days of dating, let's say, but they've been on a bunch of dates. Still, that's a move. That's a moment. That's yeah, it was a moment. It was a thing. Yeah. So he goes, "Oh, that's not my good side," and oh, and gets out of it and gets out of it, you know. And then oh, gets, got, got out of the shot. Yeah, <laughs> wouldn't let her do it. <laughs> so she's all like, "What the fuck?" You know, like, "What does this mean?" You know, is he seeing someone else? It was really rude. I'm really upset. I went home and cried for two hours. And um, mm. so, I mean, this is this is really a great example. Like her thoughts don't mean anything about that. There's no way she could know right. unless she asks him or is psychic <laughs> or comes to right. me to ask me what he's thinking, <clears throat> what it meant. Because me, for example, I put selfies on social media all the time with anyone. I mean, I t- took one in the street. This guy got me to, s- to sign up for this thing and took a selfie with him. Yeah. Uh, Often I, without notifying people. Yeah, yeah. As in the case of <laughs> when I find myself online and <laughs> right. don't know that I'm going to be there. <laughs> right. I do that to you all the time. Yeah. We need to talk about that later. <laughs> <But> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then other people don't put their selfies online at all ever. They're my, especially teachers. Public sure, school teachers. Sure, sure, sure. So, and then I did have a moment with my former boyfriend where he got really squirrely about me taking a selfie and that was because he was cheating on me and he didn't want his girlfriend. Of course, right. And so these are completely different different behaviours. And But the last one that you named. Yeah. I would, I'm just going to go ahead and say that I would... Yeah, I think that that's going to be the first thing to mind. That it was the first thing to her mind. Right. And it's unfortunate because if you, just by virtue of all the other things that you named, even statistically, it's it's not the most likely reason not to be in a selfie. For me, again, it it would, it is 100% about, this is a step towards solidifying a relationship. Yes. and I, Or, cha- or making a change. And that's what she was upset about because it, it signaled to her that he was not willing mm-hmm. to take that step. For, yeah. I see. But she also thought that she was he was seeing something. Yeah, and that's why he wasn't willing. Right. So she made two she did assumptions. Twice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, you know, lesson 10, my thoughts don't mean anything. Like she could have avoided all this upset if she'd done these exercises. <laughs> You know, my thoughts don't mean anything. You can still find out. You can still ask. You can meditate. You can improve your intuition. You can do all that stuff without getting a broken heart, without getting crying for two hours, without wasting that energy and time. Yeah. You don't need to be so attached to your thoughts, which, in fact, don't mean anything. Right. We're at lesson 10 in what makes sense very much to be called the course in miracles because right. this is a very tall order that's being asked of somebody. Yeah, and it's is it a, not? Yes, yes, and that's why we do it step by step by step, little by little by little, 
this way, that way, just for a minute at a time. Right. Uh, but, you know, as it says here in this exercise, this idea will help to release me from all that I now believe. And that release is such a relief, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Oh, absolutely. No, absolutely. I mean, I've experienced, I've definitely experienced prolonged moments at that state, right, where my, what you said. Um, <laughs> what, release from all that I now believe? Or where my where relief. my where I was not invested in them the putting meaning into my thoughts where I was mm, mm-hmm. right um, free from it released from it yeah sometimes by accident and then after a lot of practice sometimes you know on purpose and it's been great uh, it's it's not an it is probably a very it's, of course it's a natural state it's a very natural state but it's not one that's easily you know it's not easy to bounce back into without consistent practice right it's a habit it's a new habit of thinking which is exactly what. A Course in Miracles is all about. I feel like if you mastered this skill and and walked into a first date, you would you would it would be like dating an alien. It would be like dating you mean star if man. I would be the star man. I yeah. Would. If I like sat down next across from somebody I was meeting for the first time and just like spoke truly from my heart about you know uh, a world where I was not associating meanings to things. It it's just not the culture, but I think that. Uh, well, yeah, well, well, I mean, just trying to imagine it. You know, I don't walk into dates and start talking about how no, nothing not ta- means anything to me. No, no. <laughs> I mean, if you walked into a date in this sort state. of state of mind, right? Well, that's maybe what I, I do. Yeah, all right, maybe you're right. Maybe I'm. That's that's what I do. Yeah. Um. And, but, so, but the thing is, see, we only need like a little bit of ego. This is all about dismantling the ego. We only need as much ego as it takes just to have a personality and not to be like gummy man, gummy bear, whatever. <laughs> what? <laughs> what I said? <laughs> no, whatever, you know. Right, um, okay. Veg- oh, I see. You yeah. know, like. A um, moldable of, object. Yeah. Um, so I do keep my personality. Sure, 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 sure. But this is how I walk around. Right. And, you know, the, the thing that the one thing that can be offensive to people is if I laugh at something that is conventionally a serious subject or a traumatic subject or a tragic event. Example, please. Well, I had a client the other day and she is a hospice nurse. And as we started our work, she was giggling. And and we were talking about she was wondering, you know, is this her purpose on earth? Is she doing the right thing, moving into this new career and everything? And Spirit was was revealing that, yes, it absolutely was because she saw death as a joyful transition. Now, she has to be very careful not to laugh and be very, very happy when people are dying. Right. <laughs> very, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, yeah that is it's funny you should say yeah that's weird i come from a family where where all forms of of the tragedy maiming and horror are met with like a moment of acknowledgement followed by like let's make this somehow funny yeah which is therapeutic and also horrible um yeah, there's, I'm not sure if it's different from gallows humour. I think that's a step towards it. I think my client was beyond that. It wasn't about gallows at all. It was truly a joyful transition, which is which is how I see it. But um, I think gallows humour is really can be really healthy and a really good step towards. It can be. And 39 years of it straight is uh, is something other than helpful. Um, well, we, we, yeah, well, right. Yeah. I mean, especially, and then if you're drinking it down, you know, you're having a wake or whatever, you know, and you're drinking it all down, you know, that's not really helpful. But yeah. what did we laugh at today? There was a song you played me and we laughed, we oh. both laughed really hard at some lyric. Oh, well, it was, it was it, uh, it took all the coke in town to bring down Dennis Brown? No. It was, it was, a, it might've been that song, but it was a line oh, before no. that about shooting. It was about, Kurt Cobain. Was it that? No, it wasn't that We're one. That was a good one too. We're talking about the Mountain Goats, by the way. <laughs> that was a good one too. So here are the Mountain um, Goats songs we played. No, we played about walking songs. into the th- shooting people. Uh, uh, 
Oh. Full, pumping full of lead. What, right. <laughs> what was it? I'm trying to remember. Um, we're going to get back to you on that. But, uh, oh, it's, I'm going to bribe the officials. I'm going to kill all the judges. I don't know. And Mountain goats, the sunset tree, it's on there. Anyway, I'll, we'll um, have it by the end of the episode. But it was funny because I heard you laughing behind me and I was like, God, not that many people in my life would laugh at this like I'm laughing at this. Right. And I'll tell you, and honestly, at least me, at, at least one of those points, I think my laughter was half conscious because I was, I knew what content was coming. Uh-huh. And as much as I know you and know you not to kind of. Like, um, be offended by anything, yeah, or need like sort of a uh, trigger warning kind of thing. Uh, uh, That's not the term I'm looking to use, but no, preparation, uh, what's, yeah. I heard a be- much better term even than that recently. Oh. Just a, a content, a content preparation, content, content warning. warning, yeah, content warning, something yeah. like that. I don't know. Yeah, I've yeah, heard, yeah. I've heard uh, the Orpheus Protocol warning, does it yeah. very well at the beginning of episodes where in fiction something that could. That yeah, is content warning happen. is not a bad way of doing it. But anyway, yeah. Right. So, although you are not one to need much of that in my experience, mm, mm. Um, part of that laughter was uh, to say, uh, I know that this line is kind of fucked up. Uh huh. Yeah. I think. But after that, you know. Can I? Can I pause? Yeah. This, we should have maybe discussed earlier, but we don't. Um, we're at. Uh, Episode 10 now, I mm-hmm. guess. Episode 10, maybe 11. Well, it's less than 10. Less than 10, yes. But we're, we're a little bit into the podcast now. I don't really know if the listeners know what it means when you say, I was working with a client. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, so I'm a psychic medium and spiritualist minister. And my clients come to me for help with spiritual growth. And they sometimes have very specific questions like, can I please talk to my recently deceased brother about what he wants to do about the will? Uh, Yeah, uh uh-huh, yeah, very useful. Mm -hmm. And other times it's like I'm being haunted in my dreams, what does this mean? Or I'm seeing things, am I insane? Or it's helped me deal with my mother who has Alzheimer's and – I want to grow with this spiritual challenge. So it can run the gamut. You know, it's ministering and it's psychic mediumship. It's like a psychic therapist. Right. Okay. That's really funny. Uh, there's the aforementioned Orpheus Protocol features a character who is a psychic psychiatrist. Oh, really? Which would be the best psychiatrist. Well, that's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Everyone should come to me. Because I can tell you what people in your life are thinking. You don't have right. to like go round and round and round about it. But you can't read minds. That's the one thing. Uh, I can yet. tune in. I can't. No, I should say I can't tell you what they're thinking. I can tell you what they're feeling. Right. But if you could read minds, you would know that I was going to bring us on this huge tangent, which I did. And I well, even if I could that. read minds, I have to choose to do it. That's yeah. what that's, that's people think. People think I walk around like knowing everything. But no, that would be. Fucking, can yeah, you imagine? Yeah, goddamn nightmare. Yeah, so no, I don't, I don't do that. I don't, I don't do that. To turn, turn it on and off. Mm-hmm. So, where the hell are we now? Well, well, our thoughts don't mean anything. That's all. We have to live in the moment. Yeah, and this is an exercise to do it. Yeah, let me think. No. How do you think? Uh, <laughs> so, don't let's say you work on this lesson and you, you sort of. You're getting it. It's working for you. Mm, practicing it. Mm-hmm. What sort of outcomes might you? What 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 things might you expect to see? Experience differently in your day to day. Is well, that a question? That yeah, can be asked? totally. Yeah. But, well, it means you won't be upset so much, like the the woman I mentioned. Right. You know, someone's like jumping out of a selfie, and you'll go, huh, and you'll get curious about it, as opposed to attached to your own thought which leads to a painful emotion. And pretty soon, uh-huh. uh, eventually, pretty soon, eventually, <laughs> pretty soon, uh, you won't be afraid of a broken heart. And that, that to me is something I would love to give to people, especially mm. women, mm. to go into dates, to go into relationships, w- romantic 
physically especially, but even with children and parent, dying parents, to go into them without being afraid of being hurt because then you can live fully as opposed to living halfway because you're afraid and you're putting up walls or getting defensive. Okay. Can you tell? God damn it. Uh oh. <laughs> Sorry, I almost met it out on a huge way, and I'm not going to do that. <laughs> uh, about why this is the third time we're trying to do no, episode. No, don't, yeah, don't do no, that. No, nobody knows that. It's an edit point. We can take that out. All right. So that's interesting what you just said. Very especially interesting. Um, um, what. It's, tell me if you would, because I don't know. As a woman, what uh, what is a woman afraid of being? In what way is a woman afraid of being mm. hurt on a on a first or second date? Aside from some, you know, really horrible over the top kind of thing, or including. Uh, I'm not sure if it's exactly being hurt like by the first or second date, but it's afraid of at some point the a man helicopter now breaking her heart. Sorry, it's okay. Um, yeah, afraid of, afraid of opening up and at some point in the nearish future, the guy disappearing or changing his mind or not being the one and then she's left broken hearted. That is so interesting to me because I, my experience is sort of along the lines of Not knowing when, not knowing when it's the right moment to kind of show emotion, because that can scare a person. In my experience, um, you seems, you showing emotion scares the women you uh, date. That's a concern of mine. Okay. I don't know that it does. I mean, I've not heard that feedback because, well, I just haven't. But I think well, so showing okay. So I mean, I think we could agree that 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 showing uh, more than average emotion means that uh, you're communicating to the other person that you are prepared. You have a greater depth uh, emotionally. You're, you're getting invested in the relationship. I'm, I have feelings for you now, you know. The last time... Well, that's two different things, and I think that's a very important point. And what I try to teach is that just having feelings right now doesn't mean you're promising anything. It doesn't mean you're investing. I don't even know what that word means. I would assume that it means I'm investing in the future. Like if you know, if you it's like a financial term. Like I'm putting money into this for for in the hope of future future gains. Right. And I and I think that that's wrong wrong mindedness. I think that's a perception that we n- can benefit from dissolving. I can be very very much in the moment and expressing incredibly strong, deep and high and wide emotion. Yes. But not expect anyone to Mm -hmm. ask me to marry them or not, not ask anyone on a second date. I mean, it it just, it is now. That, and that's fantastic. I, I, I have not run into a lot of people like that. Right. And I think that's what we're trying to learn here. Right. Right. So. We, so we've done it. I think we'll, there'll be more on this in uh, Miracles yeah. in Manhattan after midnight uh, for the, uh, uh, but to come. Well, okay. Well, let's, let's end this here and let's go do a Miracles in Manhattan after midnight. What is it? Miracles after midnight. Something like that. Yeah. We'll, let's go we'll do that. Out. Let's invite people to. That's fine. But, oh, we should also tell people, hey, guys and gals, um, we have an email address now. Yes, we do. And why do we have an email address, Steph? So that you can email us with questions? With questions. <laughs> We're taking questions. We are going to answer your questions in as apt a fashion as we answer one another's here on this podcast. <laughs> Miracles in Manhattan at gmail.com. Easy to remember. Yeah. All you have to do is remember the name of the podcast and, and then gmail.com. Very popular email. It's a Google product. Miracles in Manhattan at gmail.com. So just remember that and we'll we'll point you in the right direction. Yeah. And um All Yeah, right. for reals. Do so. do please email questions and, and and don't feel like they need to be totally pertinent to the episode you just listened to. No, 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 no. We'll any 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 yeah, any yeah. lesson. Yeah. Cool. 
All right. Well, that's lesson 10. Okay. And we'll see you next time. <laughs> lesson 11. All right. That's, that we're done here. All right. <laughs> hey, have a great week. Then you say goodbye. Oh, bye. <laughs> bye. For sure. Just keep that was fun. That was good. Okay. We're back on track here. Yeah.